Today I'm going to do a short video about how to use a double dummy solver that I use to analyse my play on BBO. It's integrated with the BBO My Hands database, so you need a BBO username and login, uh, but you should have one of those if you're going to analyse your BBO play. So the software comes from Bob Richardson at Bridge Captain. Uh, he used to sell computer software, but most of his programs are now free. And if you go to bridgecaptain.com, and I'll put the link in the notes, we're going to go down to the double dummy solver. Uh, this gets updated regularly as he finds new features, new uh, languages, and fixes bugs. And we just download the current version of the double dummy solver. And we'll see that this will download slowly uh, because I'm a fair way from my router. It's about just under 8 megabytes in size. So uh, whatever your connection these days, it's just under 9 megabytes. It doesn't take too long. Uh, when you click to install it, uh, Microsoft will say that it doesn't recognize the app or it doesn't recognize the uh, author of the program. Uh, as it's a free program, I can fully understand Bob not uh, going through the Microsoft certification. Uh, if you click more info, you have the ability to install the program. Uh, I suggest you scan it with your antivirus and anti-malware uh, software first, but I've never found any problem. I'm not going to run it here because I already have it installed. The second thing to do is to enable the your access to the My Hands database on BBO. So if you go to bridgebase.com and click on Hand Records, that'll take you to the My Hands database and ask you to log in with your BBO username and your BBO password. This is the method that the double dummy solver uses to access all of the hands that you've played. Uh, you can do it yourself through the BBO interface. Uh, but let's bring up the double dummy solver. And what I'm going to do is download results. So here you can see my BBO username, how long I want to download it for, whether it's 24 hours, the last week, or one of the months. You can also get results from the Common Game or ACBL Live if you're an ACBL member, uh, or just from a PBN file. Uh, but I'm going to use it to get BBO results. You see, it actually goes on to BBO, downloads a file, uh, and then stores it in your downloads directory. And this is the key critical database that is used offline. So it's calculating the double dummy results for all the hands I've played uh, and other information. And then it's the leads and then it's going to show me the hands. So if I go to the scoreboard, we'll see I've played quite a few hands. Well, 48 in the last 12 days. Uh, it gives me average imps, pass score. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter these deals and just look at one of the one of the matches I've played. Uh, I've had two partners over the last seven days. I've had a few opponents, but I'm going to pick Victor Silverstone, who we played a match against. Check that to include, recalculate it. So we're just looking at those boards, and then I can look at the scoreboard. I can look at the 24 hands I played against Victor and Wazim in a match on Monday. Uh, you can see immediately that we won the match by 51 imps, uh, but our score against par, imps v par, was minus 5 imps, which means we were less than perfect. We couldn't see all the cards. Par is a difficult thing. It's what you could score if you could see all the hands. Obviously, we can't do that. Uh, and it, your, your, your score against par depends a lot about how many slams you bid and make or games you bid and make 
uh, that are possible, not necessarily those that you should bid. I mean, you shouldn't be bidding slams just because there's a 10% chance that they make, and on this occasion they do. So if you click on a hand, it'll take you to that hand and show you what happened. Uh, it shows you also all your alerts, which is one of the things I do to check that my brother and I are given the same information to our opponents. So here, my brother has opened four hearts, but he's alerted it to say that he did have an alternative bid, three no trumps, available to him as well, uh, implying that four hearts is not as strong as it could have been. So we'll get rid of that. And you can just track through the play by going through the actual trick. Uh, you can see all the cards are marked. Uh, this little one in green means if you play this card and you can see all the other cards, then you have the opportunity to make an over trick. If he played a small diamond, it says that green equals, he will make the he can make the contract if he can see all the cards. And if there are any red numbers on there, you're going to go down that number of tricks. So in this case, my brother won the lead after considering whether to take the finesse. Uh, and then let's just play actual trick. He cashed the ace king of hearts because he didn't want to concede a club rough. He was happy to lose one heart and two clubs and hope that the club nine came down, or they were, yeah, or they were three, three, uh, rather than take the heart finesse. That's the kind of just tactical decision you make. And on this occasion, it didn't really matter uh, because the clubs are three, three, and he was always making 10 tricks. Um, you can see on the bottom right, the double dummy table. This shows you how many tricks you can make uh, east, west, and north, south. Um, and it also tells you what the par contract was. So if you could see all the cards, then the best contract for both North, South and East, West would be four hearts making an over trick for 450. Uh, that means that there's no sacrifice that's available to East and West. So you can track through the braid. This wasn't a particularly interesting one. The next board, one no trump by me. Uh, as you can see here, uh, West Wazim on lead. Uh, anything he leads, he does have the capability of breaking the contract uh, because all the cards are red. And we can see the lead he chose, the five of hearts highlighted in green, gives them the opportunity to con take the contract three down. Uh, as it happened, they only managed two down this time. I'm sure they were perfectly happy with that. And we can just click through the deals and see how we could have done things better. Um, go through the play. An auction like this, um, we can see here a lot of alerts. In fact, every bid except the final bid was alerted. Uh, but if we look at... Uh, my bid of four clubs with the six. I couldn't remember what my brother's three no trump bid meant. So I was lucky on this hand that the response, whichever the two meanings it was, uh, was the same. So I could tell the opponents I couldn't actually remember. Um, and I was either given a key card response or cue bidding. That's more information that they necessarily I have to give officially, but it seems a very sensible thing to do. And then I was fairly sure when my partner bid four no trumps, uh, that was key card. So I gave a key card response again and we bid the slam. Now I'm sure Victor and Wazim were slightly bemused by us not really knowing or by me not really knowing what we were doing. Uh, but we did gain a slam swing as their teammates played in five clubs on this board. So that's a quick introduction to uh, the double dummy solver. I use it quite a lot uh, because I want to look at what we did. I look at every card, um, see if we could have done things better. I'm not so interested in the, the imps or the par imps. I'm just interested in how we can improve our game. And it is important to remember when you're playing with a double dummy solver that it can see all the cards. So doing the best you can is not necessarily the right thing to do. You need to 
when you're playing a contract, look at what declarer knows and what the defender knows, um, not what all of the cards. So it is a bit of an acquired skill. But I hope this has been interesting if you want to use the product.